Lily and the Bee. Um, thank you for joining me today for a little chatty catch up. I have got lots of things to show you today and to talk about. I finished my mouse, so I'm going to show you that. I'm going to make you wait till the end. <laughs> for This is for the Helen has um, created a mouse along. It's not called a mouse along. What's it called? A a mouse, oh it is mouse, mouse along Mal, where lots of people are joining in and we're all making mice all together. And um, there's a hashtag, mouse along Mal for Instagram, or you can email her with your completed photo of your mouse if you're not on Instagram. And this is Helen from Mace, Mousy Makes Pod on YouTube. And I will tag her underneath so you can um, easily get to her channel if you need to. Um, and yes, I've finished my mouse and she's there and you can't see her and I can and um, she's really cute. She wasn't cute. She didn't have a face for two days. She had a face. I picked it off and then added it again two days later. She didn't look like a mouse. She, she looked weird. So anyway, I'll tell you that at the end. Um, I have got mainly embroidery type stuff because I'm a bit obsessed with embroidery at the moment. So yeah, I'll tell you about that in a moment. And what have we been up to? We went for a lovely walk, yes, not yesterday, yesterday rained. Did it rain? No, it's been a weird, it's been bank holiday in the UK and it's been rainy, sunny, rainy, sunny, and it's a blur, which day was rainy, but we went out for a walk and it wasn't, it was yesterday morning and it was sunny, but then I think it rained later on. And I will pop a video up at the moment. I normally put the videos up at the beginning, but then I thought when people click on my video and there's a long video at the minute, they might think they're not really sure what my videos are about. They might think, oh, what is this? So I'm going to put in the future a little bit of C at the beginning and then I will talk about what I've been doing and then I'll put a little, a little video of our walk or what we've been up to as well, which might be a walk, might be something in the garden. or But I do quite like making a little video of something each week anyway, so I hope that's OK. Um, but yeah, we went to our normal beach and we went for a walk uh, we go down to the beach which you'll see from the video and there were loads of the sand martins we went we were on a bit of a higher bit because you can go down to the beach and then there's a bit you can walk through a wood so as we were going up to the wood we were on the bit of the cliff where all the sand martins were but they didn't know we were there and we were really quiet they didn't know we were there so they were up flying really close to us like above our heads and also I tried to video them as best as I can so if you watch the video you might be able to spot a few but the bird song was lovely the whole video all the bird songs even when we just walk into the beach it was just amazing really nice and you do notice it but I think when I play it back to edit it and, and to upload I think oh, I can you know notice it again it's just really nice to listen to uh, and yeah the, we wanted to see the we went up to the woods part because um, if you remember that's where Neil saw the Highland cow once they do keep we saw a sign they do keep Highland cows there on that part of the that then goes off onto a farm what was i saying oh yes we walk up to that part of the woods because it's full of foxgloves and they're beautiful but there weren't quite as many this year last year there were hundreds so whether there's some more to come out i don't know i've got a few in the garden that have come out so is there anything else in the video uh i think that was the main part of our walk i am going to take a video of our garden and do a little tour of our garden but i've only taken a couple of videos and then it started raining and it's been pouring ever since so i haven't haven't managed to do that but i will show you because it's quite a up and downy higgledy piggledy garden so i think it'd be quite interesting and i know lots of you have asked about my sea glass and beach combing and what kind of things i do with it so and a lot of the time i mean i just lay them around really <laughs> Strategic, strategically placed all over the place but I think it looks uh, quite different so you might hopefully enjoy seeing that but that will be um, maybe next week or the week after whenever the weather's a bit nicer and I get a chance to to film it and make it all look uh, yeah basically film it not in the rain um, yeah, so I will pop the video up of our walk now and then I'll come back to you
so I hope you enjoyed uh, the little video of the beach and the walk. And um, what we're going to do now, let me show you my embroideries. So my black one, finish this one. Uh, and I, I love it. I think it came out really nicely, really neat and nice. And I practice my French knots and I love the colours. That one is by Hawthorne Handmade. Um, yes, yeah, so that was the main one I was working on when I was on holiday, but um, yeah, finished it, completely finished it now. I've been working through this book, Among the Wildflowers, Among the Wildflowers by Tiddy Rose, which I absolutely love. Um, and I did go through the book in a previous episode, which I will, oh, I wonder if I could link an episode below. I don't know. I don't think I can do that. But where I talked about the book and did a little bit of a, a book review. Uh, but. I really enjoyed making them and I've made two. I've made this one, which was lilac, just on linen. And I've made this one too. So those two are finished and I'm making a third one, but I've decided what I'm gonna make them with. You know, make them, make with them. Uh, and this is the third one, which in the book is forget-me-nots, but I'm going to do mine different colour flowers and I think I'm going to use my variegated thread that I bought when I was on holiday for all the green. But I think I'm going to put bright flowers and not just the blue. I think I'm going to, I think, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, but I've decided what I'm going to make and I'm quite excited because I've never made one before and it's quite big and it's going to be a long, slow stitched kind of pan stitching project. I'm going to make a quilt. Not a massive bed quilt, but a um, lap quilt, like a medium sized quilt. No, not medium, small, small quilt, lap quilt. Similar to, or inspired by, the lovely pictures in the book. Because I keep looking at them and thinking they're so nice. So I've already got squares for the middle, which are these, well, I haven't made them yet, but these will be the middle section. Then I'm going to put borders round. I mean, I'm not a quilter. I've made cushions in a kind of quilting. I guess that's similar. I've never actually made anything proper quilting before. So I might watch some tutorials or I might just make it up, which is my usual way. <laughs> I mean, I know the basics of it. It's three sections put together with the wadding in the middle and I've got a square of wadding which I accidentally bought in lockdown thinking to make bags with but it was the wrong thing it's really fat and squishy and I think it's perfect for quilts so it'd be good to actually use that because it's taken up loads of space in my wadding box so yes yeah, so I'm basically going to put different fabrics around the outside I think I'm going to make four blocks quite big to join together using all different fabrics and then I'm going to, I've got the four embroideries will be in each middle, in the middle of each. Although the flowers aren't technically that I've used each season, I think I'm going to base it on four seasons for the colours. So I'll have like bluey, white, grey for winter and then bright colours for the summer. And then my favourite colours, I love spring colours uh, like the forget-me-not colour and yellow and like purpley sort of colour mixed together. So I think those will be the spring ones. And yeah, autumn yellow and brown kind of colours as well. So, and I'm really, really excited and I'm going to do extra embroideries around afterwards. I won't do the lacy bit because I think that's the thing that sometimes it's not me when I see the slow stitched or that, that has the lacy bits on. It's not my style. So I need to kind of, I'm going to work it so it's a bit more me, definitely. Um, but yeah, all the, I love those daisies. I'm definitely going to put some daisies on. Look at those lovely daisies. There. So I'm definitely going to use them. I also bought, I bought another book. I'm a bit obsessed with embroidering. I bought this book as well, Embroidering Plants and Flowers for Beginners. And that's got some nice, give me a quick flip through. Just smaller designs. The patterns are in there, but not the, that's a pretty one. The patterns are in there, but not the templates. The templates are in Tilly's book. But this one is by Charlene Porias, I think. Show it to you there. And yes, I really like it. 
like the ideas and the yeah i'm just really excited. i just love flowers i love wild flowers so yeah i've got those kind of resources eventually with my embroidery i do want to draw my own and i've got some photographs that i can trace or but i just want to i don't want to i tend to run before i can what's the saying run before i can walk with things and then the, if they're not very good enough i'm not going to do that again but i want to try so i'm learning all the strict oh, and practicing with the templates and then i'll be able to draw them and then yeah going for my own photos that's the how i want to go with learning that and getting better at that and i'm so excited about making the quilt i can't wait to make it and, and and share it with you and yeah add all the bits on and sit in front of the sofa stitching away not in front of the sofa on the sofa <laughs> so, looking at the sofa sitting on the sofa stitching away uh yeah so i feel like i found a nice hand sewn project that i can keep doing it's yeah perfect so super excited about doing that and sharing it with you um i think that's it for the embroidery I did manage to iron the little mouse. Do you remember the little mouse? Not a mouse, I'm, that's because I'm looking at the mouse and I can't wait to show you. Um, the little bird from the vintage magazines. I have ironed that. I managed to iron it and get it a little bit printed on. And then what I did with the blue pen, I just drew the rest of it on from the picture. So I can sew that now as well, but that's really tiny. So I'm not sure what I will do. It would look really nice actually in the middle of some English paper piecing. Um, I'm going, I've got some, I've got an English paper piecing pattern and some more things I'm making with English paper piecing, which I'll show you next week. Uh, and something to do with my like, stitch markers as well, because I've been making sea glass stitch markers and I haven't got any left. So I'm going to make some more and then I will be adding them to my shop, I think. But yeah, I need to get them, little bunches of them made and I've got the thing, how I can add them and make them and package them up and everything. So I need to get that ready and then I'll add them to my Etsy shop. I think that is it for the all the embroidery stuff because that's what I've been doing this week apart from making my lovely mouse. Now, my mum, oh, my bag. My mum gave me these, well, she was going through some of her old fabrics and she found these and for some reason I said, oh yes mum, I'll take them, but they're hideous. Sorry mum if you're watching. They are absolutely, the fabrics are, that isn't even one, so that's, that's quite a nice one, but that isn't, that suddenly got in there accidentally. Let's move that. So yeah, for example, these were from, and I thought, I think, I thought they were, I don't know, I think, I did think they were from a shop or something, but my mum said that she bought them from a, a school fete in the 1980s, like a school bring and buy sale or a fete, I don't know, something to do with school, um, but yeah they're not as a as a package they don't look very nice so i kind of had this idea this is to do with the mouse i had an idea can i make them look into something can i make them cute and then my inspiration for making my mouse oh it's a sewn mouse was the borrowers do you remember the book the borrowers i my friend at school read the books, but I didn't. But I watched the TV series, which is unusual for me because I normally read, but like in the life, and I love reading all those books. I like reading, but I didn't read the Borrowers books, but I watched them on television. And from what I can remember, and I don't even know why this popped in my head, let's do this fabric, that all their clothes would just be made from bits they'd found or bits old clothes from the people who lived in the house, actual house above them. Um, so that was my inspiration for making the mouse's outfit. But I started to patchwork them together. Did it super fast, really, really quickly. <laughs> so this is, these are the bits that I've got <laughs> the remainder. So I made a big square of patchwork from these are the ones that are left from the um, hideous 80s patchwork squares and cut a dress out. It looks quite nice. And yes, so inspired by the borrowers and making clothes from scraps, which sounds hideous. I think I've made a cute mouse. I, she did has had two faces. I made a face and it didn't look right. She didn't look like a mouse because the pattern is not that pointy at the nose. I thought she doesn't look like a mouse. I need to do something with the face. So I picked it all off again and then I kind of sort of made my own nose and I've added some whiskers and I think she does look like a mouse now. 
although I sent a photo to my mum and she said, oh, that's a lovely cat. And then she did say, oh, it's a mouse, isn't it? She put afterwards. So yeah, anyway, here is my little mouse called Helen. I've called her Helen, not based on Helen of um, Mousy Makes podcast because Helen wouldn't have found clothes from under the stairs like a borrower, um, but she's called Helen. Uh, so yes, here she is in her little patchwork dress. She's got a headscarf, which was also, I've even put some little, because I had to join two pieces of that together. So she's got some little stitches there, which I think it makes it look like she's, um, it's got really dark outside, which made it, made it look like she was, it's been like patchworked as well. And I put a little bit of lace around the bottom of the skirt. And I'll show you, take a dress off and I'll show you the actual dress and how I made it. So there's the actual little dress. Isn't it cute? As soon as I started joining the patchwork together, I thought, oh, actually, that's quite nice. It does look okay. And the inside, I'm going to show you, being brave, showing you how messy the inside is, but you can see how I made it there. There's all the little patchworks all joined together. And I love this dress pattern. It's really easy to make because uh, you don't need any fastenings or anything. And you just put the elastic round and stitch round. And yeah, it's brilliant. So we don't want her in the in the mood. So let's put her dress back on again. Um, yeah, this pattern, I had the pattern anyway, uh, because as you know, I've been going, making my way through all the studio seren patterns. And I bought the mouse a while ago and I hadn't bought it because honestly, I wasn't sure about the face. Um, on the one that um, that was was made on there. That's the one with the face. I just didn't think it looked very mousy. So, oh, let's put your arm in. Can I put it on back to front now? Possibly. It, it works both ways, the dress. You can have it on either way. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I did give her little whiskers and she's got little rosy cheeks. And one of her ears always <laughs> keeps falling back. Because I did something different. Normally stitch the ears on afterwards, but I thought that was, I find it quite hard to make them look neat. So I changed it up slightly and I sewed them as I went with the pattern, as I put the head together. So I think that's probably why. And to be honest, if I did put a little stitch in there, I'm sure that would stay. <laughs> I'm sure that would stay up. But um, yeah, I'm pleased with how she um, turned out. And can you imagine her under the stairs having to make little clothes? from all the bits and pieces that she can find from the clothes that the family who lived upstairs could have thrown away. I think I remember the borrowers, they, lived, they did live under the floorboards, didn't they? I don't really know why that popped in my head. Uh, but yes, I um, will put her with my collection of other animals here. But there she is, I'll take a photo and add her on Instagram because I think that's what um, Helen has asked us to do. But yes, there's my little Little mouse, Helen Mouse, with her lovely patchwork dress. And I mean, the hideous 80s, which aren't hideous on Helen, they look lovely on her. Let me put you there. You can sit next to Fallopian the Frog. Put your legs go through there. Oh, look at her. Oh, she looks great up there, doesn't she? What collection of. Do you think I've got too many handmade animals <laughs> around? We have garlic person with the baby garlic we've got the emotional support elephant cl clover and you have the emotional support elephant and we've got fallopian the frog behind still got some left so will i use it i don't know um i wish i could have used it all for one thing really maybe i could make myself a top matching i don't know but i think it's really nice that i've used these 80s 1980s fabric from the school fate <laughs> um, because I did say when I was talking about making a mouse I had an idea I kind of want to do something upcycling and I do like the challenge of making something new from something old or reusing things so I do I do like that I want to do more of that kind of thing um, but yeah I think with a little headband as well she does look like I think it all looks look quite nice together with the gingham the gingham wasn't upcycled that was dead stock fabric which you can buy and it's it would be put in thrown away if it wasn't resold sort of thing so um that's yeah that was a dead stock fabric but anyway yep she is finished and i don't know what animal i will be making next 
I haven't got plans. I think I might have a pattern. Have I got any more patterns? I'll have to go through my patterns and see what else I've got. I'm not sure. But there will be an animal at some point. I cannot stop making animals or creatures or um, garlic people. Or yeah, I might even make a potato headed person or or something. I'm not sure. But um, watch this space. Um, so I think that is everything um, I'm going to share with you this week. Uh, I've got a few things already planned for next week. I've got an EPP. EPP? Yes, I've got some EPP things, like I said, and I've got a something new I'm going to try, completely different. That's sewing, but something completely new to share with you as well. So I've got the pattern from, but I haven't made it yet. So I'm going to be making that in the week. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And I hope you have a lovely week. And I hope the weather is sunny, which is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be every day. <laughs> I hope it's sunny wherever you are. Uh, take care, uh, everybody. And I will see you again soon. Bye.